Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders. If you want to see more videos like this one, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. The fancy YouTube algorithms will rank us higher and enable us to keep making great content for you. Thank you for your time, now let's get into the video. Okay coders, in this video we have a really cool and quite possibly challenging update to our scene. First of all, let's take a look at what we have so far. If I just press the play button up here, we start our scene, we can see that we are orbiting. If I click, we can see that I am instantiating random objects into our scene and they are being destroyed. Woo! Pretty cool. Now, in this video, we are going to remove the orbiting camera and replace it with a camera that looks at different targets. We may be able to combine the two different types of movements within this tutorial, but let's just see what happens. So the first thing we need to do is go into our scripts folder, which I have open here, and create a new script. So right click create C sharp script and we can just name this change camera targets. Pretty long name, but that's okay. Now let's open up our script. Okay, I do want to point out really quickly that I am using a new IDE for this video and this IDE is actually Vis Visual Studio on the Mac. I actually just completed a review yesterday that you guys can check out. I'll be sure to link to that in the description, but the IDE will behave just like all the others. So let's go ahead and get started with our scripting. Okay, so as per the usual, I'm going to get rid of my start function here, and we just need to set up a couple of variables. I'm going to need a public transform target, and I'm also going to need a public float speed. We're just going to set this to 1f for now. Now I'm going to need an int. We're just going to call this one random target. Uh, a quaternion. We can call this new rot. And finally a vector 3 and we'll call this rel pause for relative position. Now inside of our update function here we're going to do an if check. So we're going to say if target is equal to null then we're going to call some function. So just say some function. Else we're going to do some other stuff. And we'll fill this out in just a little bit. But for now, let's go ahead and create our function. So beneath our update function, we're going to create a void and we'll just call this get new target. Don't need any parameters. And now the first thing we're going to do inside this function is create a game object array and we'll just call this possible targets. And now we actually want to fill possible targets. So let's say possible targets is equal to game object dot find game objects with tag. Just like that. And we'll set the tag equal to ball. Okay, cool. Now the next thing we need to do is actually do an if check. So we're going to say if possible targets dot length is greater than zero, then we're going to set random target equal to random dot range between zero and possible targets dot length. Okay. Finally, what we need to do is say target is equal to possible targets random target dot transform. Okay, so let's go through this code really quickly and just make sure we understand what's going on. So the first thing we're doing is creating an empty array of possible targets. And then we're filling that array with all of the game objects that we can find with the tag of ball. Next, we're checking to see if we actually have found any game objects, and that's actually really important. This if check here is really important, because if we don't get this and the function is called, then we could run into a lot of errors when we try to set random target and target. Inside of our if statement, we are setting our int random target equal to random dot range between zero and the length of our found game objects. And then finally, we are just setting our actual target to one of the found game objects. Okay, cool. So now we can actually replace this sum function comment here and just say get new target here. Okay, and that's all we have to do inside of the null. Now, what I could do here is just do another look at. And if I say look at, then what's going to happen is the camera's going to snap between 
multiple objects. You know, so instead of sort of slowly rotating or quickly rotating between the objects, um, so let's say I'm looking at an object and then it falls off uh, the, the platform and gets destroyed, then I would find a new one and just immediately snap to look at it. And that's not the behavior that I want. Instead, I want it to, you know, when it changes targets, to rotate the camera to look at that target over time. So actually, let me go ahead and show you that what would happen if we just did a look at. So we're going to say transform dot look at here. Okay. And we're going to look at target dot transform. Oh, actually, it's already transformed. So that should work. Now I'm going to go back to Unity, and it's important that we actually create a new tag here. So let's go, just click on an object, go to Tag, we're going to add a tag, and let's click on the plus button, and we're going to call our new tag Ball. Okay, now we need to go to our prefabs. If we select all of these, we can set the tag of these prefabs to Ball. Now, if I press the play button, what's going to happen is, oops, we actually have to add our script first. So let's turn off the orbit, add component, and we're gonna add our change camera targets script here. And I've got a speed of one, but that will not take effect yet. So let's press play now. Now if I click, you can see that we're just very quickly sort of looking, watch what happens now. It's gonna very quickly, boom. Do you see that? How it just immediately rotated and was looking at the new object. And that's not the behavior that I'm looking for. So we need to go back to our script and inside of our else statement, we can just get rid of the look at. And what we're going to actually do is play with our relative position and new rotation variables here. And what we're going to do is set our relative position equal to target dot transform. Actually, we don't need transform. We can just say target dot position minus our transform dot position. Okay, and now, whoops, make sure you add your semicolons. And now we're going to set our new rotation equal to quaternion dot look rotation, and we're going to pass in our relative position here. Okay, and now the final thing we need to do is say transform dot rotation is equal to quaternion dot rotate towards, and we're going to pass three things into this function we're going to pass our transform dot rotation our new rotation and finally we're going to pass time dot time times speed okay cool so let's save that and now let's go back out to our script here and let's see what happens now so let's click and as you can see I'm continuously following this now and when it changes it rotate it upwards to look at that new target. So again, I'm just sort of clicking, instantiating some new objects. Let's see what happens when I instantiate a lot of them. You know, so you can see it's just sort of following the one until it gets destroyed, and then it's quickly rotating to look at others. Now if we slow down our speed here, so if I say set it to like 0.25, and now start instantiating objects, our camera is going to rotate more slowly to look at the new objects. Okay, now let's set it really slow. So let's set it to 0 0.01 and see what happens. This may be too slow. So yeah, that's that's a little bit too slow, really. They're kind of dying off bef before we can get to them. But again, you know, this is a really cool, fun script, you know, and it, it really enhances the way our camera's behaving. And you can use this type of camera behavior for all kinds of things, really. Let's say you're you're playing an RTS, for example, or you're let's say you're building an RTS and you've got multiple units moving and you want to have the camera rotating between the different units or something like that, then you could have that occurring using this script. All you would have to do is set up the same logic we've got here and again play with the rotate. Uh, rotation speed or the speed variable that we set up and it will easily rotate between those different targets. Okay so it looks like we've got enough time here to actually set up the orbiting as well so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna uncheck this orbit here and if I now go back to my editor and open up orbit one of the things that uh, I'm gonna try first is actually removing this transform dot look at and see what happens. So right now we should continue to orbit 
But I'm interested to see if the orbiting actually messes with the way that we are changing between our targets. So I've saved that. Now let's go back out and take a look. If I press play now, oops, we do have to set a center point. Actually, the center point is set. So let's see why that was acting. Let's see what's going on. Aha. So that would be the problem, right? We haven't set our initial look at. So now what should happen, though, is if I click, we should rotate around to look at the new target. So technically it is working, but it's just a little odd because what's happened... Whoa, that was cool. Uh, what's happening is we don't have an initial target, so the camera is just sort of pointing in a specific direction or a generic direction from the beginning. So we have to make sure that we have, we're have we instantiating an object at the very beginning. So what we could do to actually fix that is add in a ball at the very beginning. So let's try that really quickly and see what happens. And I'm just going to drag one into the center. Make sure we've got a destroyer script on it. And now let's press play and see what happens. So when I press play, we're rotating around. We're looking at it. Boom, it's gone. Now we're not rotating anymore. So here we go now. Once I've instantiated some more, it's actually rotating to look at those new objects. So very cool. I actually really like the way this looks. You know, it's it's uh, fairly, I'll call it cinematic, you know, because it is sort of, you're, you're capturing the balls coming right at you and things like that, which makes this a pretty cool little script to have. And you could, of course, combine the orbiting script with your uh, change camera targets because it's really just another function call, right? All we're doing inside of this is increasing our timer and calling this function. So technically we could take this function out and uh, remove this timer call and just put this in this script. I'm not going to do that here just because I kind of like to have them a little separated, but pretty cool stuff going on. Now, I do want to point out that we are going to continue working on these scripts. We're going to continue sort of enhancing this scene uh, as, as far as we can take it, honestly, and then eventually we'll start setting up new scenes and just doing new scripting challenges and things like that. But that is going to do it for this tutorial. I will be sure to post the links to the previous video, the playlist, and the Visual Studio review view in the description below. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos.